It's been 84 years. But this is the home stretch. Our OG G5 case has been cut, trimmed, sanded, and given a new paint job, and it's ready for the final assembly of our stuffed to the gills Hack Pro. When we're done today, it should be the only Hackintosh that's not only capable of running with the top spec 2019 Mac Pro, but even capable of overclocking past it. And when we're done, you're gonna know all about our sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet wants to redefine the wallet with its compact frame and RFID blocking plates. Check out how they can keep wallet bulge down and use the offer code Linus to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping. Let's start with a look at our new custom front panel. So instead of USB 2 and Firewire, we've got two USB 3.0 Type-A ports and a 3D printed panel with them hot glued in place for a mostly seamless look here. Oh yeah, and of course, like the original front audio, and we've got the original power button still in there. Turning it around gets us a look at the back panel. Now this thing ended up getting broken in the shuffle of turning our workshop into a 3D printing farm. But after some minor repairs, some JB Weld, a comedic number of binder clips and some sanding, it's finally ready to call done. Overall fit and finish far exceeds what my expectations were for this project. It's not perfect. Nothing is perfect. But from a reasonable distance away, you would be hard pressed to look at this case and go like, oh yeah, those USB ports aren't supposed to be there. That's not supposed to be an inverted ATX layout. One of the goals for this project was to have the original side panel latching mechanism still intact when we finished. And I'm happy to say that we've achieved that. Some G5 case mods just get by with, you know, screws or whatever else, but we really like this mechanism and we want it to be as G5-like as possible. Well, you know, aside from everything. So the first thing we're gonna put in is these modified radiator mounts, which are gonna allow for an easier install of our 360 millimeter rad in the front. In a normal PC case, obviously you would just screw them in from the front, but that would totally wreck the clean look. I don't want it to be obvious, oops, other than the color, that this is not just a Mac. We figured out our fan mounting, but we actually realized that the <clears throat> RGB strips were not in place around the LTT logos. After one failed attempt to put them on, we've got another effort ready for you guys here. I'm just gonna give it the old <clears throat> Oh, yes. Does that look cool or what, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, it unplugged. Oh, lordy. Real hopeful right up in here that everything's gonna actually fit. It's the first time actually Laying everything out here. Uh, front HD audio, got the high definition audio. Gotta try to not get any cables like right across the logo here. All right, I think this is it. Motherboard trays going in now. Hopefully this will be the last time, but I imagine we'll have made some sort of mistake or other. Wait, oh boy, we're gonna have to mash some cables flat here, boys. Ooh. The motherboard tray I'm screwing in right now serves two purposes. One is it gives me somewhere to route cables because unlike the Mac Pro, the Hack Pro needs cables. And number two is it allows us to adapt the original mounting holes, which is what we're screwing into, to whatever standard this is. At this point, we're ready to start putting hardware in. We're gonna start with the radiator that now has uh, <coughs> color-coordinated anti-vibration doodads on it. Oh boy, it's gonna be a tight fit, ladies and gentlemen. Triple radiator in the G5. <laughs> oh wow. We gotta be real careful not to ruin this here wiring on the power button, eh? I didn't notice how fragile that is. Uh, should we put some hot glue on that? Don't wanna accidentally put too much strain on these really fragile connectors here. Oh, well, that's definitely a tight pressure mount. Now that we're ready to begin building in earnest, let's run through the hardware we're using. I would forgive you for having forgotten. We're using an Aora C621 Extreme motherboard with an Intel Xeon W3175X28 core and check this out. 
a custom VRM water block that was uh, altered for us with two inlets and two outlets because of the unique design of our case that it needs to fit in. We're using a Velocity WS water block that's gonna weigh about three pounds. This thing's absolutely incredible. 384 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX memory. And we've got so many expansion cards. Oh, right. Silverstone Strider Platinum 1200 watts. Super small 1200 watt power supply. And then we've got dual Radeon 7s. Oh yeah. We've got 10 gigabit networking. We've got wireless networking and Bluetooth, hopefully Mac OS compatible. And of course, to match the high performance SSD in the Mac Pro, we have a high performance liquid SSD in our Hack Pro. There's all this water cooling shiz over here, a power supply, bracket doodad, some underwear, lttstore.com. I still can't stand mounting CPUs in LGA 3647. There's this, see, you take the cover off and there's just no mechanism. There's this carrier that you kind of clip onto your cooler. Or you can put the thing in the clip on the thing. I'm actually just going to ditch the carrier. I really don't like it. So I'm going to put the CPU in here, give it a little wiggle wobble, get some paste on here. I'm going to be using the, the X marks the spot with some extra decorations method here. I wonder what's going to trigger people more, my thermal paste application here or the fact that I'm uh, giving my block a little wipey wipe with my shirt, lttstore.com. Oh yeah. The final mount down the last time we're building this computer. Now we can install our RAM. Obviously, 2666 megahertz RAM is not the fastest anymore, but given that these are 32 gig sticks and they're running at CL16, I'm expecting our performance to be adequately decent. And the motherboard goes in now. This is about to get heavy. Just settled on my lawsuits. <laughs> These are gonna go over to the graphics cards. So what you're looking at here is about how clean the cabling is gonna look for the finished rig. Now it's time to install our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cards. So Wi-Fi is handled through the PCI Express slot and Bluetooth is handled with this USB header. So we're gonna use the very, very top slot for that. This is gonna be one aesthetic disadvantage of the Hack Pro. The fact that it needs these hanging out the back of it. <laughs> this graphics card is one of the more controversial steps in our build. We're installing it in a PCI Express 8X slot rather than a 16X slot. We left that full bandwidth slot for our SSD. You might prefer a different approach. Now I can go ahead and install the first of our power connectors. 10 gig network card goes next. What's cool is when we're done, we'll actually still have two expansion slots left in our system. Need just a little bit more slack. There we go. And graphics card two is powered up. I started up some of the tubing. You can see I've got the GPUs plumbed together. I've got this one over to the rad. Uh, this is gonna look a little weird. You see, this is gonna kind of run over here. That's cause the outlet from the pump comes over here and then it's gotta go into the inlet of the CPU block. Last time we tested this, we had them the other way around. The performance was not great. While I'm working on this, I can tell you guys a little bit about the process of actually painting the case. So step one was stripping the anodizing off of the original case. One of the easier methods is to use easy off oven cleaner. So you spray it on, let it sit and wipe it off. Just in case it's not obvious, by the way, be sure to wear personal protective equipment because that stuff is bad for you. <laughs> also be sure to give the part a good rinse because otherwise the cleaner is gonna continue to eat away at the aluminum and you don't want that. Now, instead of hard sanding, we opted to use a soft wire wheel to both rough the surface and to get rid of any excess oxidation from the cleaner. It was a long process, but the thing is, for any good paint job, it's like 80% prep, 20% painting. So after that, it was just a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol to make sure that it's clean and there's nothing that's gonna get in the way of the paint adhering. And it was time for priming. With all the pieces laid out, it was sprayed a couple of times lightly. Then it got a heavier finishing coat, being careful not to get any runs. Those will show through to your final product unless you let it completely dry, sand it down, and then recoat it, which is a real hassle. For paint, unfortunately, we just used a regular flat black enamel that you can get at Home Depot. It's not the best, but the upside is that the case 
actually got painted instead of us just waiting around forever for the guy who was supposed to do this thing professionally for us. It did have kind of a horrible spray pattern, even compared to the primer that we got from the local paint shop, but a few light coats with a heavy overlap, followed by a wet coat, and then of course, some clear coat to improve its durability a little bit. And we've got what I would consider to be a, like a, a three foot paint job. Like I'd say from outside of three feet, it looks pretty darn good. One of these runs is a little tricky here. I gotta get from this guy over to back here. I remember this from last time. It was tricky then and it was tricky now. These fittings are great. Oh yeah, we'll have the links to everything we're using in the video description as usual. Oh yeah, I think I gotta take like a good solid inch off this thing. I did not get the length right on that. It's good, I think I got it actually. There we go. This is actually going way smoother than I expected. One, what was that? It sounded like something fell, didn't it? Oh, here I found it, it's fine, it's all good. After all this has been through, like everything guys, like flexing the arms over the chassis without the paint cracking, it kind of kills me to do this, but we told ourselves this is the final build day, this is it. So we're putting some 3M VHB tape on the bottom of the radiator and we are taping it into place. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, everyone. I apologize to all of you. Hold on, don't move it. I gotta move it so that I don't accidentally clamp down on the tape. Okay, it's in. There, easy. Now all we need is to basically plug in power and fill it with water. I couldn't watch Nicholas hot glue in the power supply cables for our modular power supply. I mean, what's the point of a modular power supply if you're gonna glue in the cables? So I'm gonna install our two eight pin CPU power connectors while he does that. I, at least I hope I can. This is one's gonna be a little bit tricky to get in here now that I have permanently taped in the radiator. In Nicholas's defense, he did warn me about this. Now we've talked about this in previous installments, but we've never actually shown it working and understandably quite a few of you were confused by how the modular power supply was supposed to get in here. So this plugs into all these loose cables down here at the bottom and then screws in from the bottom of the case. Then the power supply basically goes schwonk. All the clips are cut off. So the whole thing just goes in there like that and is held in by gravity. Arguably this is not the best, but whatever, where's your G5 Hackintosh, all right? Uh, what is this for? That is for the... Can we just cut most of them off? Yeah, we can. Ah, well, let's, we should do that then. As long as you cut them short enough that they can't touch each other, you shouldn't have any shorting problems. But um Yeah, see how it looks fine, just fine. Okay, well, some of the labels fall off. It's fine, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Put that on there. Route kind of over here and around. There we go. So all this, that's not the most graceful thing ever, but it just kind of, just kind of jams in here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's fine. I ended up having to do a little bit of hot glue surgery on the interface here after actually installing it in the case, but everything seems to be solid now. So let's hope that this lines up and this will be the last time we put it in. Hey, there it goes. Let's hope I put this on the correct way. Oh, look at that, I did. That plugs in right there. And this is it. This is the first time you guys are seeing the final configuration. So all the fans are plugged in. We're just using Y cables so that we can use the handful of motherboard headers over here to power them. The pump is plugged in. We've got the RPM sense over on the CPU opt header over here. We've still got Two PCI Express slots open. We would love to use one of them for Thunderbolt, but still some troubleshooting required in order to find out if that's gonna work. In the meantime, let's fire it up. Just kidding, just kidding. Bad GBs. We're gonna fire it up before we put the side panel on. We managed to find two funnels. So what I'm kind of thinking is, you can't spell funnel without fun. I know it, I know it. Okay. Here we go. You wanna uh, plug in the bottom right angle? Yeah, we need a, thing is we need a right angle power connector on the bottom there. Cause it's kind of low profile. I really hope the power button works. 
two radiators and all this tubing is a lot to fill. This is gonna take a few rounds with a tiny reservoir like this. We're going for a continuous fill here now. That doesn't sound like a good sign. Oh, we're close. There's lots that can go wrong while assembling a machine of this nature. Oh good, the RGB logo on the back still works. Man, I gotta say, there's something kind of wrong feeling about disassembling this when we're done like we normally do. Hey! What are the odds it's gonna boot right up into macOS? What are the odds this, these fans are running again? Let me have a look here. Nope, not yet, I'll give it time, hold on. Wow, that 80 mil fan is like perfect in there. You and your pressure fits, dude. I, I can't say I approve of it. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't install updates because Hackintosh? Let's say later. Remind me tomorrow. Hey, yeah, like OS updates? Heavens no. Okay, cool. Uh, we're connected to Wi Fi though, so that's good. So let's see if our wired network is working. No way. You said the Bluetooth didn't work. Oh, wait. It's spazzing out a little bit. Okay, so we have some work to do on Bluetooth. It does not like this mouse, but this is also like Corsair gaming mouse. It could just not like this mouse. Should we run a quick benchmark? This thing is. Darn near silent, isn't it? Oh wow, the fans are off. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Well, why don't we do like Geekbench? Mac people like Geekbench, oh, yeah. right? We haven't actually overclocked it at all yet either. No. Okay, while this is running, three months late and way over budget. 3275M, here we go. 19,165, wait, why are we so much higher? Really, are we gonna be faster even before we overclock just because we're water cooled and we can turbo higher? Dang, this is gonna be better than I thought. There's a lot of places we lose. We have no Thunderbolt yet even. Now that this thing is up and running with great performance, all that remains is some software tweaks and driver optimization to get it running as smoothly as possible. Oh yeah, and some overclocking. So it's ready for the big drag race against the real Mac Pro 2019 28 core. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. If you're looking for something else to watch in the meantime, check out the series of videos chronicling the <laughs> epic build up of this puppy. And uh, hey, also maybe consider checking out our sponsor. You think you don't need a website? Well, of course you do. And with Squarespace, it's easy to make a website that you can do almost anything with. They've got award-winning templates that'll help your website stand out instead of looking like it's from the 90s. So if you're looking to open a business online selling products, they've got you covered. You can showcase what you're selling in a modern style. They've got inventory management. There's no limit to how many items you want to sell. And even we use Squarespace. Both our LinusMediaGroup.com and LTX Expo websites were built quickly using Squarespace. If you ever get stuck, they've got a 24-7 support team that's ready to help you out via live chat and email. So don't wait. Go to squarespace.com slash LTT to get 10% off today. I can't believe it works. The LTT logo looks freaking awesome. And you guys said it would never be done.